Namaskar and welcome to the new lecture series on food fortification with special emphasis on fortified rice. Do you know we all consume fortified foods every day? Many of us may be aware or may not be aware, but in our day-to-day -day food items like milk, salt, cooking oil, wheat flour, and many other ready-made foods including baby food are invariably fortified. In this lecture, we will learn what does it mean by food fortification, why to go for food fortification, what are the various benefits of fortified food, and many other things. So, let's begin. What is food fortification? As per World Health Organization, fortification is the practice of deliberately increasing the content of one or more micronutrients that is, vitamins and minerals, in a food or condiment to improve the nutritional quality of the food supply and provide a public health benefit with minimal risk to health. But, why to go for food fortification? Globally, more than 2 billion individuals or 1 in 3 people are affected by hidden hunger. But how can hunger be hidden? If someone is hungry, he will feel the gnawing of hunger pangs, the vastness of an empty stomach. But if the hunger is hidden, one may not feel it. So, what is this hidden hunger? The World Health Organization defines hidden hunger as a lack of vitamins and minerals. This occurs when the quality of food eaten does not meet nutrient requirements. We may not feel hungry, but our bodies feel this hidden hunger, and our health suffers a lot. It is also known as micronutrient malnutrition. The effects of micronutrient malnutrition range from nutrient deficiency diseases, compromised immune systems, higher mortality rates in pregnant and lactating women, as well as in infants, mental and physical retardation in children, and so on. Even mild to moderate deficiencies can affect a person's well-being and health, which ultimately curtail socio-economic development. Every country in the world is affected by one or more forms of malnutrition, like childhood stunting, childhood wasting, childhood obesity, low birth weight, anemia in adult women, overweight in adult women, and others. The Report on Global Assessment of Food Security and Nutrition 2023, jointly published by Food and Agriculture Organization, World Food Programme, UNICEF, World Health Organization, and International Fund for Agricultural Development, depicts that approximately 735 million people in the world faced hunger in 2022. The number has grown by more than 100 million since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic. Worldwide, in 2022, an estimated 148.1 million children under 5 years of age were stunted, 45 million were wasted, and 37 million were overweight. The prevalence of stunting and wasting was higher in rural areas, while overweight was slightly more prevalent in urban areas. Underweight, low birth weight, anemia and others are also major concern worldwide due to malnutrition. Combating malnutrition, in all its forms, is one of the greatest global health challenges. Recognizing that accelerated global action is required to address the burden of malnutrition, the 65th World Health Assembly, in May 2012, endorsed a comprehensive implementation plan on maternal, infant, and young child nutrition that included six global nutrition targets to be achieved by 2025. The targets were reduce stunting by 40% in children under 5, reduce anemia 
by 50% among women aged between 19 to 49 years. Ensure 30% reduction in low birth weight. Ensure no increase in childhood overweight. Increase breastfeeding in the first six months up to 50%. And reduce and maintain childhood wasting to less than 5%. To accelerate progress toward this goal, the United Nations on 1st April 2016 adopted the first ever UN Decade of Action on Nutrition from 2016 to 2025. In the years running, various nutrition targets agreed upon remain unmet. Hence, in 2018, World Health Organization and UNICEF proposed extension of 2025 targets to 2030 with one additional target. The seventh target was to halt the rise in adult obesity, which the World Health Organization had adopted as part of the Global Action Plan for the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases in 2013. Of the seven global nutrition targets for 2030, only exclusive breastfeeding and stunting among children under 5 years of age have improved since 2012. The global target for adult obesity is still 2025. The Hidden Hunger in India As per the data provided by WHO and Save Children, malnutrition is one of the biggest challenges India is facing. Data suggests that every second woman is anemic, Every third child is stunted, every fourth child suffers from malnutrition, and every fifth child is wasted. Reports also suggest that malnutrition is the cause behind 68% of deaths in children under the age of 5. The report of 5th National Family Health Survey, NFHS 5, conducted from 2019 to 2021, depicts that 67.1% children from age 6 months to 59 months, 57% women from age 15 years to 49 years, and 25% men from age 15 years to 49 years suffer from anemia. When we compare NFHS 5 data of 2019 to 2021, to NFHS 4 data of 2015 to 2016, it shows that the prevalence of anemia has increased in children, in women of all ages, including pregnant and non-pregnant women, as well as in men of all ages. Further, the percentage of anemia is higher in rural population than in urban population. As per NFHS 5, the nutritional status of children under 5 years, measured in terms of stunted, that is height for age, wasted, that is weight for height, and underweight, that is weight for age, has improved slightly when compared to NFHS 4. But, still India is far behind the global nutrition targets. According to the NFHS 5, India has a very high burden of micronutrient deficiencies caused by vitamin A, iodine, iron, and folic acid, leading to night blindness, goiter, anemia, and various birth defects. There is a huge economic impact of such individual consequences at micro level, like loss of income, learning constraints, high cost of treatment for illness, as well as at macro level, like loss of human capital. As per one international study in 2013 by the charity Save the Children, malnourished children could earn as much as 20% less in adulthood, which is the economic cost of micronutrient malnutrition. The study says that by 2030, the global economic impact of malnutrition could be a staggering $125 billion, out of which India may lose up to $46 billion nearly 2.5% of its GDP. Recent reports highlight that malnutrition is a major impediment in India's economic growth. A report from 
the Associated Chambers of Commerce and Industry of India in 2021 says that nearly 4% of India's GDP is lost due to malnutrition. This loss can be reversed by focusing on the nutritional gap. So, the need of R is to fill the nutritional gap. Filling the nutritional gap can be achieved through various strategies to increase availability, access, and choice of nutritious foods to ultimately improve nutrient intake. So, what are the different strategies? There are various strategies to address the nutritional gap. Biofortification is one of the important strategies for increasing nutrient content in dietary food, but the time frame is too long. Similarly, dietary diversification is also an important tool to achieve nutrient gap, but cost of dietary diversification may not be affordable for mass population. The third approach, which is supplementation, is a targeted approach, but monitoring of the same is again challenging. The fourth approach, that is food fortification, is a complementary approach which make it easy and sustainable. There are several benefits of food fortification approach which make it scalable and sustainable. It is a safe, healthy and scientifically proven intervention. In this approach, there is no change in eating pattern, taste and flavor for the consumer. The desired micronutrient and vitamins can be easily integrated with the regular food item. Also, it is cost-effective and affordable for all as well as it can reach a large section of population effectively. There are several health benefits of food fortification with vitamins and micronutrients. Vitamin A helps in preventing night blindness. Vitamin D supports strong bones. Vitamin B12 is important for maintaining normal functioning of nervous system and blood formation. Vitamin B9 or folic acid is important for fetal development and blood formation. Iron is crucial to fight anemia. Vitamin B1 or thymine is required for normal nerve and heart function. Iodine is required for normal growth, thyroid and brain function. Zinc supports a healthy immune system. Vitamin B3 or niacin improves blood cholesterol level. Why? Vitamin B2 or riboflavin and B6 or pyridoxin helps in releasing energy from food. There are economic and social benefits of food fortification as well. Increased cognitive ability of children like attention, memory, perception, logic, reasoning and mobility. Increased productive capacity of adults and Less burden on healthcare system are major economic benefits. Why? Positive impacts on nutritional food security, public health, and overall welfare are social benefits of food fortification. In the next lecture, we will learn about history and scope of food fortification. We will also learn that why rice is a preferred vehicle for food fortification as well as effectiveness and impact of rice fortification around the world, including India. Thank you.